It is Psalm Rain the 20th, and it has been, uh, the world has changed. It has been unseasonably warm and gentle to be Northern Albion, to be in your Pictland. That has come to an end. And um, we'll put you all right into the Hounds Lodge. Um, to see if there are any preparations or discussions you wish to have, but um, you can hear the, the gale force winds outside hammering against the outside of the building. The civilized, or the movements, the gears of civilization that had begun to sprout up around Caden's Rest have ground to a sudden, abrupt The merriment holidays of darkened tide. Preparations have ended. And what holidays uh, maybe were to come within the next couple of weeks, the remaining feasts have all been brought to an end by the weather. And everyone, most people have taken the small livestock that they have and they huddle inside with them, stay with their livestock. And uh, people are not out and about and moving. Um, and uh, in Darkened Tide in Northern Albion, now comes the time of darkness to run. Contemplation, to speak. However, uh, your companion um, had the uh, foresight to build the towers that have now been discussed for two years. Um, they're not completed. The men and material and the pathways that lead to them are there. Uh, however, uh, if you travel in the cold as it is right now, um, well, as it is right now, you would simply perish. Any animal, man, beast that tries to go out into this would, would perish. Um, and you find yourself locked down, um, essentially for two days. Interesting thing. Um, happens where there's hardly anything at all that you can do for two days except perhaps travel through the uh, the two feet of snow and the stinging winds and risk going just out nearby to one of the buildings Aiden's rest on the peninsula. Is there anything that you want to try to do in this time where the weather has basically brought everything into darkness and death? I would first of all it was supposed to be Alaric calling. Yeah, good point. So who's who's? Let's make it uh, uh, Father Bloombad. Perfect. Celebrate your new mic. Nice. <laughs> Bobby, it's the same mic, uh, just a oh, new well, computer. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I'm uh, I'm all for just. <laughs> Getting started, do we have to go to the tavern? Yeah, just, uh, you know, so it's the, the 20th uh, right now, um, and it's essentially lethal outside. It's uh, beyond Arctic. I mean, uh, the temperatures are minus 44 degrees Celsius in the day and minus 50 degrees Celsius at night. And, Good uh, gravy. And the winds are gale force. It is hard to even stand up. At this point, I mean, you would take two damage per hour, regardless of conditions. Uh, that is to say, regardless of fire or uh, clothes or your outside you'll take. Except, I believe that our wizard, that our magical man, if I remember correctly. No, no, I was wrong. I was thinking of a different edition. Um, well, we can't. Uh, we can't go anywhere. Thing. Sounds it, like it. Is the tavern occupied at this time? The entire peninsula has been brought into a sleepy silence, um, other than your rotation of guards that uh, Flanagan puts on watch. Um, and Flanagan will just say is sick. Because Flanagan is sick. <laughs> so understandably. Indeed. So um, other than that. Uh, these minimal movements, I mean, nobody much is out and about. 
Certainly. Well, then I'm I've I've got an absurdly roaring fire in my basement and uh, uh, study, and uh, I'll invite anybody who wants to come and hang out with me to do so. I think that yeah, sounds I'll, I'll come. sensible. Share a flagon of wine about. It probably smells funny there. <laughs> oh, definitely. But at I least Zuv, at least now. Zuv knew's out of here. I wonder how Zuvnu's doing. He's probably they're probably hidden too. deep underground again by now. I wonder too. I hope I get to find out one day. I'm sure we will. Um, no, I'm not sure, but I'm confident. All right. Um, this is why I'm. At la I'm very glad I cut all that firewood. But it looks like this is what it was for. I've got to make a, uh, a check. Shall uh, shall we play a game, wizard? Of course. Well, let's see. We, we could call it uh, Griffins and Grottos. That's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Pencils and paychecks. I, uh, yes. All right. Um, Algar, you could roll a d6. Oh, you're really starting early, aren't you? <laughs> A six. Six. Surprise. Hopefully it's good. Turn on. Uh, Algar, as you all are huddled together, um, it is uh, uh, almost balmy uh, in the way uh, Agnes has insulated you all in... Uh, the base of his tower. Um, I assume you meant your tower, not uh, not here. Yeah. Right yes. And correct. So um, it's balmy in here. You're sharing wine and uh, having games and things like that. Uh, this uh, this weather has interrupted your plans for an expedition. And Algar, all of a sudden, you you hear, you know, there's there's wood creaking outside. Rhythmically, uh, something has caught into the wind and is weather vaning. And mm. this stops and then continues. Something, something has blocked the wind. That to you means that someone is making their way inside of the tower right now. Mm. Unannounced. Excuse me a moment, I think we have a guest. I hear someone stepping upstairs, he says. Which is not, strictly speaking, true, but it's a more... It's shorter than that whole explanation you just gave me. Magnus jumps to his feet. Rex is here. If we're in the tower, Rex is here. Oh yeah, Rex has his, uh, his feature. Um, he has a feature, yeah. Where is it? Rex and... Um... Alert to danger on a two and six if you want to roll a six. Which you already know in this case. Two and six. Nope. So, nope. Um, and uh, yeah, the, the fact that only Algar can notice this tells you that this is uh, either a false alarm or someone of such great expertise that it would rival one of the fabled rangers. Well, let's all let's all go stop this fool. Let's bring a candle. Actually, how what's the lighting conditions like outside? It's like my assumption. Uh, all right, in that case, yeah, let's bring bring a candle or two. Get some tokens uh, out here and build some walls. Sorry. How about I? Uh, now, now I realize I got to actually design this thing. It's okay. Sorry. Go yes, ahead. my good sir. Here, take. I, uh, how about I cast Bless on us for a change? Since we're not in combat yet. Sure. That'll give us a uh, plus one on attack rolls. Awesome. Right. 
Um, let me see if I have. So you all get up and walk towards the noise. Is that uh, mm -hmm. very well? Um, I don't believe I'm wearing any armor, but I probably still have my sword on my person, just because of the nature of my profession. And if not my sword, then my dagger, which is also magical. Uh, Alright, so you get into the stairwell when, uh, and Algar, you already passed, whoa, you already passed this. Okay, how do I, this on the map there. So you probably make it right here into the stairwell, and then Algar, you see some, you see a humanoid figure flip down. Uh, I'm, I'm assuming Magnus would not be up front. Um, no, I would cer certainly be up front. He he flips down behind the group, clearly targeting Magnus, and uh, everybody can, um, or not everybody, games mixed up. Uh, uh, Father Bloomdad, you can roll a d6 for initiative. I have all this mixed up because. Oh dear. Got a two. Let's see what he gets. He gets a four. Um, he is not surprised. He drops down and immediately attempts to attack. Let's see, so with surprise, you can go ahead and declare any spells. If you see this person drop down. Charm person. All right. Uh, any other spells? Father Boom Dad? Alright, uh, let's see. Uh, no. I'm sorry, I know I should have done that first. Movement, he just moves and dashes towards Magnus. It's clear that that's his quarry. Anybody else can move. Since it's the first move, you're also not in melee. And I interpose myself between Magnus and the assassin. Yes. And I do so immediately. Alright. Um, and melee and spell. So let's see. He's able to act first, so he does attack Algar since Algar gets in the way. Um, My armor class is. I think 10. Yeah, it's basically going to be 10 right now. Okay, 18 plus 6 is 24 to hit. Plus 6. I believe that will hit. He is a storm of blades. He starts slashing his blades, but he doesn't do much damage. Three damage. Um, and uh, it's your all's turn. You do your melee attacks first if you want. Armor class uh, target is bloody heck. Weapon. I will say his armor class is 15. Alright, I'm going to roll with my dagger, but I've got the bless, so it's plus one on top of whatever this is. Which is not good. Dang it. Okay, uh, and then charm person. Gets charm a person. Save. Oof, and he fails. And, um,. He stops like he he looks you know so he he tried to obviously drop down from the ceiling. Well, actually, let me start with this. What is it? What does charm person look like? There you are. We heard somebody come in. We feared it was some mongrel from the streets. You've arrived just in time. He uh yeah, <laughs> he holds both daggers up, confused. Thinks for a moment, he says, 
kind of wags his dagger. He looked like he was getting ready to try to bolt. Because this didn't work, you know, somebody intercepted him. Um, and then he... Uh, ah, he, he, he thank you very him. much. Mind if I have a look? Oh, what, with the dagger? Yeah. He, uh, he, he holds out the dagger for you to, uh, to take it, and then he, he thinks he's like, something is, something's, something is wrong about this. Something, when he sent me here, this is, hmm. Uh, who sent you again? That's Why don't you have a seat, friend? It's, you must be you must frozen be cold. from your journey. Yeah, so You're cold right, I, I think this is a mistake. Yes, best we talk it out in my study. He slumps down in a chair nearby. He says, This is your Magnus. The very same. I mean, you knew that, though. We've known each other for years. It's just, it's been a while. I understand. I understand the confusion. And I aside to Father Bloombad, by light is my witness, I will never quite get used to seeing this in action. I was sent to kill someone. But there was some sort of mistake. They they sent me here to this tower. I think ah. they, I think they want you dead. They do, do they? Well, it's very, very kind of you to bring us this information because you've saved my life, friend. Right, right. Yes. Now tell us more. I mean, you this they, they, whoever it is these these. These employers of yours, uh, um, I'm curious to know. I, I bring him a bottle of, I bring him some wine. Yes. Hopefully he doesn't fixate on the completely, di di on the deeply disconcerted expression on my face. Uh, he takes. Normally the, it's a lot more subtle than this. He takes the 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 pot, the cough, uh, the the uh, the cup of wine, and he he slurps on it rather than you know taking his time to drink it. Slurps it down, gets it all over his face, wipes it off. And uh, he's like, yes, yes, uh, Turlane sent me to take, uh, he paid me well to take out a mark, but he sent me here. I didn't realize this was your tower, friend, since last time we spoke. You have done much. Well, apparently some people have the wrong idea. <laughs> Now, uh, Turlane, remind me again, uh, I, I, I hear so many names, meet so many people these days. I hardly know either, but I know that he was good for his pay. He used a, a, a series of intermediaries of cells. I would speak to a person, and that person would lead me to a uh, place in the brush or the weather turned foul. And there in the brush was a strange being who presented a uh, pool to look on. Some sort of sorcerer. Like yourself, no offense. Um, and Not he taken. He spoke, and through the same intermediaries, I was given pay. I well, don't, I think, I think he tricked me. I think, I think he meant for me to kill you. Well, it's, uh, it's just so lucky that we recognized each other in time. Indeed. The ruse nearly paid off, if not for your friends. Speaking of, you wouldn't happen to have a bandage, would you? I've been, uh, I've been cut to some degree by your knife. Ah, uh, terribly sorry. Um... Your, uh, Under the circumstances, I think we can overlook uh, the uh, the mistake. You're lucky that uh, the season was uh, was right for this. I uh, otherwise my blade would have had a different effect. Uh, and he takes some cloth and wraps it. Uh. Thank you. Oh no, I take care of that uh, here. Oh, you're whole again. You're too kind, sir. Um, what uh, what were your instructions after uh, you were to complete this deed? He claimed he would know. I insisted I could provide some proof of the kill. 
I think that might have been part of the ruse. Proof of uh, the so kill. What, what what sort of proof would be uh, usual in these cases? Your spell book. Your head. A uh, piece of your body. Something identifiable. Eye, a head would be good. Um. I don't think my friend Magnus has any extraneous uh, extremities we can offer for the ruse. No. But, uh, surely we need to know more. Indeed. What's very Forgive me. Is, uh... I only came into uh, Magnus' company some not too long ago. I haven't had the benefit of being introduced to most of his story. What's your name again? I don't believe we've ever had the opportunity to meet before. The name is Lachan. Lachan. And I have heard of you, uh, Father Bloombad. Of course, everyone has. But you, I have not heard of. I keep a lower profile, though that's not difficult to do. I'm uh, merely a... I'm just the hired help. I'm a groundskeeper for the Hounds of the Pine. Let's see. Oh, I should give you my name. I am Algar. Well met, Murloc. I, uh... Did I get, did I get the name right? Murloc? Lockon. 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 I, uh, am a, uh, a professional. I know Magnus from other lands. It's strange seeing you here, my friend. Well, this place is beset by strange happenings, I've noticed. Hmm. Indeed. Uh, are you currently uh, residing somewhere near here? No. I suppose I will need to get a room at the inn until this weather turns. I think I may be stranded here for some time now. I see. Well... What would ha what's, go ahead? What's worse is he insisted that he would know if you were dead or not. I think we'd only have a small amount of time until he finds out. I don't know how. What was his name again? Turlane. Turlane. Is this the uh, wizard whose uh, apprenticeship I rejected? I think so. Yes, the man who. Uh, has a working relationship with the Mossman. Is this man a wizard? Oh, we communicate with him in pawns, so probably. What does Luckin have to say? He must be some kind of sorcerer. Yes. Because I was led to a wood where, um, there was some strange, shambling, monstrous beast that laid out a, a pool from whence I initially saw my reflection and then saw this man's face. Either an evil spirit or a sorcerer or something. Well, I think we'll, uh, is there like a, is there, can I assume there's like a spare room in the tower somewhere? Like a closet or something? You know, yeah, you know, a, you, you throw can, a mattress in it. You throw a straw mat, uh, collect a bunch of straw and, and, um, take a bunch of sacks and fill it with half full of barley and throw it down on the floor for a while. Yes. My friend, I have an interesting suggestion for you. Yes. How would it? What would happen if he thought you were dead? I don't know. He seems a powerful sorcerer. I imagine that it might buy you enough time for him to think of a grander play. I had to guess his next play will be much more than a very well-paid um, professional. And were you paid up front? Or? I was paid 200 gold up front, with the promise of 800 gold if I 
slew this person. I wasn't given a name, just a location, and that it would be a dabbler in the arcane. Someone with a beard and robes and such. Well, uh, he may be right. He may be just a dabbler, after all. But uh, time will tell. My friend, uh, take your ease here in my study while I consult with my fellows. Help yourself. Uh, yes, uh, what, um, yes. Uh, what, who, what is the name of the intermediary that was used? I wasn't given a name. Uh, perhaps a, uh, maybe a physical description? That I remember well. Uh, let me get him. My dog has decided now is the time. Now is the time to eat. Well. Alaric, good timing. You have just arrived in some excitement. He was a tall, burly man, balding on the top. He had a gorilloid, ape-like face. He, uh, he looked like a almost beast-like of a man. Hairy. Wild, dumb eyes. Uh, uh, does that remind us of anybody? Um, it almost sounds like the bartender from that. Yeah, I was thinking that. that. Uh, place near the fisheries or whatever. You may have made some enemies trying to get spooky with him. Alaric, can you hear us? Dan, you're currently muted. All right. So, what do we do now? Uh, it sounds like... Chris, what is your plan? To... Your plan to warehouse the guy, it seems like? Well, I wanted to consult with y'all privately while he uh, takes a drink and eyes up my, uh, you know, opulence, such as it is. Collection of thievables, yes. Um... And then, uh, uh, but yeah, my overall plan, well, a plan that I just an idea, you know, is that I pay him 400 and send him on his way. And, uh, uh, and then, uh, have no news, uh, come back, you know, or, or I mean, perhaps spread the story at the uh, inn that uh, I was attacked in the tower. And, uh, and and the uh, assailant was killed or something. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I think but, that's a fair, fair plan if you if you I, have I'm, the gold to uh, to make it happen. I mean, yeah. uh, ultimately, I would love it if we could figure out a way to make him think I'm dead. But he said he could tell if I was, so maybe it wouldn't work. If, if he's got this scrying yeah. ability, if he has this ability to see far. My experience with wizards is that they lie a lot. So well, you're not wrong, my friend. Uh, and they're good at it. So my assumption is that we can't be sure either way if he can or cannot do that, but... Most can't handle the truth, you see. Yeah. That's... Uh, it might be a good idea to keep the uh, to keep the man around to help uh, if any others of his ilk should come around. Yes, and that's uh, also a great idea as well, but, but I... I... I, suppose, I suppose it would be justice. Did, uh, did, did this wizard give you anything when you met him uh, that he might be using to spy on you? Hmm. We never had the opportunity to speak with him in person. No, but were you given anything by your intermediary? Oh, right. The gold. Ah. Ooh, uh, we could do a detect magic on the gold, see if there's uh, anything... 
Um, do you do that? That's a great idea. I uh, I do not have it prepared, but I mean, I wasn't. Uh... I also do not have it prepared. <laughs> we'll come back to it another time. I do not time. have it prepared. I also do not have it prepared. Uh, but I don't think we're going anywhere <laughs> in this weather for a little no, while. So, no. like, yeah, well, whatever. you know what? Um, we'll. Uh, I'll say, you know, friend, we'll discuss this later and uh, uh, in the morning. You're free to stay here for the evening, and uh, for your safety, I suggest you not leave the basement. Because of the storms. Well, mm-hmm. well, and also, if he has a way of observing you, uh, it may be safest here for you. Yes. Oh, Cowardice. don't worry about me. He takes the, the cask of wine brought in, takes the whole thing with the wood cup, goes over in the corner, throws down a bunch of bags, and uh, snuggles in. He's like, I'll be just fine. Goes to sleep. Very well. Uh, and I hear another visitor who hopefully is Alaric and not an assassin. Okay. Well, I gotta say, an assassin with 15 a- uh, AC is someone I'd like to have on my side. Same. And I go upstairs and I presumably let in Alaric from the unbelievable cold, the negative 50 <laughs> degrees Celsius. Say, come in, come in. We have a fire roaring in the basement. As well, uh, we have a house guest who, uh, who our comrade Magnus has made friends with. Mm. Uh, we will, in the meantime, Pay him no mind, and we'll explain the, the full details in, in short order. Okay. Huh. So, here we are, hunkering from the storm. <laughs> yeah, I it guess we'll, here. we'll wait for it till the... Well, no, I'm not the caller. I'm just... I'm just the host. <laughs> I mean, yeah. There's, there's nothing we can do because of the cold, so I mean... Uh... Sure. So I guess we'll wait, and then... Yeah. I'll I'll take the tech magic uh, in the morning. Okay. Well, however you do it, uh, I don't know if you want to be alone with this person or keep guards or have them bunk on the floor in the meantime or whatever, but, you know, you can work it out. But everybody else goes back to their domiciles. And uh, the next day, if you have a, this, a similar arrangement where you meet in the, the bottom of Magnus's tower, you have tech magic, and the second day is just as bad as the first. Uh, weather-wise, you mean? Okay. Mm-hmm. And uh, at this point, he uh, Blocken comes over and he says, "I don't suppose you've got some some food to eat? Eat much? I've been on the been traveling for a yeah. long time." Yes, I think the servants may have something in the kitchen. They usually do. Uh, oh, right, that's me. Yeah, give me a second. No, it's not <laughs> you. I'm, I'm paying for these servants. So you have pro- servants? Yeah, they're I didn't quartered. know you had servants. Yeah, they're oh, quartered yeah, he, here. You like the stuff. Oh, yeah. That's true. They're, they're quartered here. I got a domestic and I've got a, 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 like a, whatever it is, I got... You know, a couple of guys that are... Well, I'm glad that they weren't assassinated by Locken. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Would have put a very different spin on our relationship. <laughs> uh... What did we learn from the, the, the tech magic? Yeah, do you cast a tech magic on the bag? I do, yeah. Okay. Uh, you find that the bag is magical. The bag that has this gold in it? Yeah. There's a, a pouch, uh, something sewn on the inside of the bag. Ah, uh, uh, my friend, uh, perhaps we can swap bags if you don't mind. No problem at all. Yeah, I'll, I'll dump out a few bag. hundred coins from uh, from one of the bags all over my desk, and uh, and then uh, uh, swap and then hand him that one and do the transfer. And I'll have a look at this compartment. Yeah, all right. So you open the bag on the inside of it. It's clear that something hard and smooth is on the inside of the bag and sewn in place. Uh, You know, as if a a, a 
and scrap of cloth were sewn over it, or a pouch made for it and then sewn shut. Oh. And whatever's magical is inside this sewn shut thing? For sure. Okay, well, just a quick little cut with a t point of a dagger ought to do the trick. Are you trying to... Uh, are you trying to retrieve the object from inside the pouch? Yes. All right, then you do so, and out tumbles something that feels like a chunk of amber, but it has a swirling uh, yellow cornea-like appearance, uh, like a tiger's eye or a predator, and a slit in the center moves and shifts once it clatters to the ground as if an eye is looking about. Well, it's seen me, whatever it is, if something's seen me. Uh -huh. But I'll toss a, uh, I'll toss a bag over it and wrap it up, or toss the sack over it and wrap it up. Perhaps if you stab it, you may injure him. I'll poke it. Uh, you poke it, and it feels like a chunk of amber. You know, like a, a hard, smooth surface. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you can simply see the uh, the slit just sort of widen and focus on your little, uh, you know, on the, uh, the, the point at which it taps that pokes it. Otherwise, it seems to have no effect. All right. I'm going to have to study this thing. <laughs> oh, careful. You're looking into the abyss there, buddy. And it's looking back. Something's looking back. Mm-hmm. All right, what do we do? Uh, Heretic, do you have any uh, things that you want to do? Holy stuff? Uh, not really, no. Okay, sounds like there's nothing else in particular that you need to do. So uh, a day passes, um, and mercifully... Just clear the drawing. That did not work either. Okay. There we go. Finally. Okay. Um, the the next day, the winds stop, and the snow. And uh, and outside, you see that um, the snow has accumulated, and it is a frigid, uh, still. Icy, snowy, white day. Um, it looks like the entire world is white. It is still freezing cold. The skies are clear now. And it is uh, minus 32 now at night. And uh, minus, uh, minus 40 during the day. Wait, it's colder during the day than at night? Or, sorry, uh, the opposite. Minus 40 at uh, night. I am um, in trouble. I'm not leaving my house at all. A defensible the, position. Uh, sorry, no. Give you all the effects of this in a moment. This is where I hire people. Found it, finally. To get me food. And I pay them well. Very well. <laughs> I don't know if I'm not I don't leaving know if... my, my apartment. Okay. Assuming oh, sure. that I can warm it. If I can't warm it, then I'm going to the inn. Oh, sure. You'll, you'll go f risk your life in a fight to the death with the horrifying undead monstrosity, but now it's too cold. Yes! <laughs> exactly! That's exactly how I would be in real life. <laughs> All right. So, here are the effects of this temperature. Uh, it is possible to travel in this temperature. However, 
Um, there are two guard towers that you should know about now that are under construction. Uh, their construction is probably halted, but the use of them as a camp at their base as like little wood forts. Um, it's probably as far as it got until uh, the springtime when they'll probably resume at that point. But there is one overlooking uh, the kind of from this high point here. And it overlooks this entire delta and uh, this river, you know, including the, uh, the fishmongers market, etc. And then there's another uh, that sits now at the top of the mount, the mountain of, the, of doom, we'll call it. And um, it is manned, and um, now you have a path with a regular supply line that goes from this hill via this road through a kind of makeshift road straight up to the top of this mountain. Nice. And uh, eventually a town could be built. But uh, in the meantime, the effects of the cold are that horses left in the environment may perish or be damaged. Um, you will need to make a save each day or take D6 damage. The only way that you re can regain your hit points is if you have both shelter and fire. It has to be like, it can't be makeshift or improvised. It needs to be shelter, you know, which it could be uh, the actual dungeon itself or it could be one of the watchtowers. The other thing that you can tell is that all of the movements, the like I said, the gears of civilization that had started moving have all come to a halt. No one is out. The people manning the uh, the towers probably like if there's if there are regular supply runs to that tower, which I presume there must be to keep them supplied with fuel and so on, could just be that delivery guys. We could just be the delivery guys and show up and say, hey, we brought you fuel. Also, we're going to crash on the floor here and warm up. Uh, you could do that. They sort of depend on a cadence of, uh, of deliveries. Uh, you have two options. You can either wait for the next one or you can have it go early, which uh, could just cost more money. That's, that's what that means. How are we going to go there on foot or on horse? I would imagine um, this would be via horse with improvised sleds on, on a, on, okay. with a wagon. And there are horses to purchase at, uh, at and, the need for speed, right? Uh, need for speed. Yeah, because I, as far as I know, I haven't heard of them being all sold or anything like that. I'm not sure. Um, yeah, I know you have a ton because they were fully there. stocked, completely stocked. I, I had to put my horses in the other place. Yeah, you have a ton of horses. Yeah, so I I buy a horse because I'm not taking one of my horses. Okay. On that on that uh, trip, neither uh, no. no. Right. Bond breaker is staying behind, and so is. So uh, let me just clarify. Oh. Uh, so Father Bloombad, uh, you guys want. So there's a suggestion to wait for a caravan. Uh, what do you all do? Well, um, I don't know. I guess we could uh, do that go early thing. How much extra money would it cost? Mm. At most, 100 gold pieces. Yeah, I, uh, I can foot that, Bill. Okay, and it may be less, but I'll check. Um, all right, if that's the case, you don't need to bring your you can okay, good. Them. I feel I felt bad about buying a horse, knowing that I would likely have it die. But I wasn't going to kill Winter, ironically named, in that snow. Um, they essentially don't keep them out in the elements; they keep them moving. Um, and so you know, you go to the first one. Um, now being out in it, period. There's no way to to get around this, but. You would arrive to the first tower. Everybody can make their first save okay. uh, for the first day. Is it a constitution save, or what is it? Yeah, if you have a bonus to uh, okay. to anything like 
Right. Then I have Resistance. a bonus plus one, but I don't. Oh, I could use the magical one for that. Yeah. Yeah, saving throws. Great. Okay. Take everybody. Oh, the down. Okay, Algar, you take. Uh... Algar takes four points of damage. Ooh, what a wind! And, That's biting. Uh, it also everything moves much slower. Um, okay. So, um, it essentially takes you all day to get to the tower, and then they're looking at basically trading these the, these beasts out and then making a, uh, a dead run to this tower and then coming, like, straight back. That's the goal. Um, it's a risky thing to have the tower going, but then you also have that overwatch over the whole countryside. Mm-hmm. All right. Um, the view must be incredible, especially in this winter. Let's see here. Yeah, it's uh, it it does look like a winter wonderland. So there is that. Um, it it gets dark early, and in the darkness, or in the uh, oh my, oh my, oh uh, what? Um, let's see, this would be here. I go near the southern part of the villages. This is not what you would see. Uh, uh, and uh, Ross, I wanted to uh, gather up like a bundle of sticks before I left, also to take with me. That makes sense. Um, it's dry. Really bad. You take your three mercenaries, your three adventuring mercenaries. Uh, do you guys think we need them since we're with the caravan? No. Okay. No, we do not. We we do not take them. No. They probably have three. That's probably the number they have. And then uh, these carts have horses with them. And Algar, you can roll a d6. Ross, did you roll hit points for Rollo? I did not. Okay, seven. I did pretty good roll just now. Nice. <laughs> good for him. That's more than double his hit points now. All right. I roll a three on what I presume is the surprise check. Okay. So are we taking Rollo? I'm just rolling because I remembered henchmen. That's why. Yeah. You're so what are you guys saying? Okay. What about uh, Lachan? Do you really think you feel safe taking him with us? Do you think he'll even want to? Uh, Rollo has no constitution bonus, so he failed his saving throw by one. Actually, he doubled his hit points exactly. Oh no, minus one hit point. So yeah, he has six hit points added. Because he has a, a minus, so he actually failed by two. Okay. He has a minus to his hit points, not a plus. All right. Um... Oh, he's a thief. I'm sorry. He doesn't get these. I'm thinking of him as a fighter because he's a barbarian. No, never mind. Uh. Uh, Algar, you hear... Oh, I rolled a four. He has three hit points more. For him. Yeah. We'll, we'll work all that stuff out. Some other... We'll, we'll do that in between sessions. Oh, well, if he's with us, I, I figured he's taking damage. I needed to have his hit points. Well, That's why I was well, you, you just give him a second to finish. What, oh, what weird, horrible thing oh. is happening to us. Yeah. Yeah. You find out if I still have, like, guts after this. Um, yeah, uh, so anyways, uh, among the edge of the buildings, you see... What it starts as a shadow, and actually, let me let me kind of show you what this looks like. Oh, that shadow. looks so nice! 
Now, probably the buildings aren't this nice, but there are makeshift buildings that are covered in snow along the, the waterfront leading to the tower where the lodge would be. And this is just before you would have gotten there uh, at, uh, at, at dusk. And then, um, let's see, I just want to make sure. Okay. And then uh, you see this shadow shift and you hear a thumping noise. And then you hear a groaning. And uh, something as big as this building, you thought it was a portion of this, uh, this building, uh, it starts to uh, tower nearby the building, easily its height. And it groans and starts running towards you all. And grizzle. Um, and, uh, any, uh, plans, stunts, Father Bloombad? Spells. What do you do? Hmm. No spells for me. Uh, Magnus? Web. Web. All right. Uh, Father Bloombad, roll a d6 for initiative. Uh, can we uh, cast web if there's no uh, anchor point above? We can web it to the ground, but the actually, building. it there's might just the building, web to the... and There's the ground, and yeah, webbing to the ground might be difficult because the ground is mostly soft no, powder right now. It's interesting. You might just adhere to snow, but even then, it'll still get wrapped up in layer after layer of thick, sticky. Give it as a net. It'll be a net yeah. on them, but All not right. a web. Even... It's a large volume of webbing all in his face. It'll Rather... be really funny, even if it <laughs> doesn't best, work perfectly. It's the best I've got right now. It's pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, 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 I'm assuming, thinking of I'm assuming, web. I'm assuming that sleep doesn't work. It's yeah. something this big. So he's uh, he's able to uh, to act first, and he uh, he charges toward the person on the edge, which I'd have as this uh, this mercenary right here, first person oh, no. he sees in the way, and our uh, delicate little man. <laughs> and uh, anyone else doing uh, movement or missile fire can do that now. Okay. Algar is going to get into his face. Is he really tall? Like, you can fire at him, or do I have to move to a different angle to fire at him? He, he is very tall. Okay, so then Rollo will fire high. Okay. How deep is the snow? Like, three feet? Two feet deep. It probably, you can move, like, half your distance. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Um, uh, the uh, target number for missile attacks is 13. Hit it. A man after my own firing part. Oh, no. Oh, he got it on the second one with a one. Yay, one. All right. One damage. All right. Um, let's see here. Um, a, a few things happen. Um, he, uh, he lifts this little fella up, uh, and probably it doesn't matter. Well, actually, horrifyingly, it does matter. Um, you hear his butt... He, this thing oh, and like grabs the, 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 the first person he comes to, lifts him up, and uh, you can hear this this person like snap, like and you can hear oh. his bones crack and snap and break. Um, and um, and he was clawed, you can see his blood fly across the uh, the pure white snow, but then his bones snap and crack and you can actually see him snap in two. And he just limply falls across part of his spine for another 13 points of damage and falls into the snow limply and dead. I don't like that this creature is in our territory. Dark, Doing this thing to people we know. Dark and tired. Yet, has come. But, yeah, but yet he is. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he gets you next, man. <laughs> and uh, you can do uh, melee combat now. Heck, you heck are you! Now, does this guy qualify as a giant? 
Uh, you know what? Yeah, I'm going to say yes. That sounds fun. I don't think so, but it sounds fun. Let's do it. Die, you He's got very off big and tall. Target is 13. Well, I hit it. I hit it too. All right, let's see. We got 9 and 5 is 14 points of damage. And I think that's it, right? Web. And then web. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is interesting. Let me uh, let me let me look at it. I don't know. Yeah. Um, well, he is very strong. Yeah. I, but uh, awesome. but the but the thing is measured in. I mean, I figure it'll at least maybe a round or two or something. You know. Right. Uh, but the volume of webbing is quite large. It's ten by ten by twenty. Oh yeah. Uh, and so that should wrap up his whole body unless he's more than ten feet wide. Turn larger horse can break through in two turns. A turn being a minute. A turn is ten minutes, isn't it? Yeah. Ten minutes. No. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, yeah, yes, yes. A round is a minute. See here, I did it. I did it. What's wrong with me? No, I. Well, I feel you on that. Creatures yeah. and a horse can break through in two turns. Um. Yeah, no, that's what it says. The thing is, like, I like. I actually like abiding by the rules. Like, I'm not going to be creative. Like. It's going to take him to, uh, it's going to take him 20 minutes. That's what it is. So, but then it says, um, it says, fill an area extremely difficult to get through. It takes one turn. Uh, larger than a horse can break through in two turns. Humans. It doesn't say what it does, interestingly. This it says it fills an area and, and you extremely difficult to get through. Basically, it immobilizes you in the area, and that's the time it takes you to cut through that's, or break through. I'm thinking, unless you have something like a torch or something. Yeah. You know, what I'm what I'm hoping for is that the width of his body basically makes it to where I can make a column of webbing entirely surrounding him. I'm thinking what happens is essentially you you can do anything you want except move. <laughs> like you can't move. Right. Um, and so you see this happen. Oof, you see Magnus like loose this giant web and it covers this this gi this huge beast did it come at his butt or his hands it came from the sky all right it yeah. came from the snow <laughs> and, oh i like that uh all right top of the round any other spells all right father bloombad roll a d6 please for initiative and this is probably where that matters is there are now three people nearby however uh, you yeah. all won the initiative uh, so now you can move, and I will say you're not in melee. I'm going to rule that you can move away, that you're not in melee because of the web. That that makes sense to me. And uh, and you can also fire missiles if you choose. After oh, people move. I will throw darts at this thing. But if everybody stays nearby, just back things and snarls and whip, then there's a chance you'll hit your ally. Uh, yeah, we, I guess we're oh, well, spread out, huh? Please, please, yeah. yeah. If we're up to movement, yeah. Make a lane for people to shoot. <laughs> Alright. If you all do that, you're able to hew it down. Uh, well, actually, maybe not. Uh, ten minutes. Uh, that's twenty... That's like twenty well, rounds. Twenty rounds of combat, yeah. I, I, that's twenty silly. rounds will run out of arrows. Yeah. Before twenty rounds is up. Uh, yeah. So, no, we... Yeah, no, you're able to kill it in, okay. in that amount of time, yeah. Before we finish it off, does it respond to giantish if I uh, ask it if it yields? It does not. Whack it. Um, <sighs> you, uh, you see this poor, broken mercenary. You've lost one mercenary. And uh, this hulking figure that's just now slumped in the snow... Uh, eventually, it, and, and I will say it took like half of the ammo of these poor mercenaries to just like pelt this thing as it like tried to rip this stuff off. And like, uh, I, I like to imagine Magnus, this wasn't an all in one, like you continually had to try to like, you know, sort of spin this magical web as they were trying to fire arrows into it, but working together, you're able to finally kill it. Sure. And, uh, yeah. Um, they do their duty, however, and uh, 
putting the dead mercenary on the cart that continue on to the first tower. Important question. What are we doing with the corpse? Because that thing is a rare and exotic animal. And it can't fit on the cart. Take the head. We well, the head. Uh, we're still in town, right? Yeah. Okay. I mean, oh, I this can... is town? Yeah, we didn't even make it out of town. Oh my god. That's why I was yeah. so shocked. I thought this was like a, a, a little encampment around the tower because they're No, we're still camp. in oh. town. Oh, Lord. It's yeah, yeah, yeah. It crossed on the ice of the river, probably. We should sell it to that. You guys should sell it to your uh, necromancer yeah, definitely. friend. Yeah. Uh, now, the Does downside it? to that is that even the head is going to be gigantic uh, and heavy. But you know you could do something like ask someone nearby to store it or take it to the inn or even just build a cache in the yeah. snow. You know, Blue Bad has like a lot. Blue Bad, you have like a lot of credibility with the locals. You can probably get someone to do you a favor, and they know you're. All good right, for yeah, it. I'll, yeah, I'll get it. I'll get some of the parishioners to uh, take care of it. You, uh, you could ask. You made a friend here. You could ask. Um, you should, uh, frankly, you should ask them to take care of the body as well, because it's not something that we need to be carrying about in the weather like this. Animals. Yeah, let's just go straight to the grave. Uh, you straight into the grave, or at least into a uh, cold storage until he can be properly buried. That's anywhere. It's anywhere, but animals will come along and dig him up yeah. if you just put him in the snow. True. Yeah. You could ask uh, Douglas, the the kindly uh, chirurgeon, uh, back alley bone saw guy who uh, was trying to help the two acolytes. He's here. Okay. This is like at the very edge of the red quay down at the southern. Oh, okay, okay. This is the real uh, skid row down here. All right. Uh, yeah. If you uh, you tell him to watch this bizarre thing, uh, he he's he's amazed by it. He's like, "Well, can I? Could I take a look at it as well?" I. I why? Thank you. Uh, yes. Uh, please be careful out there. And and if you wish, you can leave him with me as well. I can try try to prepare him better than continuing on so far away from the graveyard, I think. The, yes, the we, uh, we will pick him up on the way back. Thank you, Douglas. Um, all right. Time passes, you make it to the tower. This tower is among very friendly people. Uh, the um, the uh, the mining camp with uh, Dougie and his family nearby. And uh, you have like a little... This is probably the next colony of a, an actual town that might grow up here at this point, especially with this tower nearby. They had a wall and uh, some more things they could actually have a village on the top of, of this place. Um, so you stay I have to... Oh, great, sorry. Gotta take the dog out. Uh, be right back. Gotcha. Uh, dog time. The sun rises the next day. Um, they are prepared to continue on. Do you want to continue on the caravan? Yes, yes, yes. Well. All right. It is uneventful. You get to the next tower as quickly as you can. Um, they will have to travel back partially in darkness and hope that they can make it back to the first tower. They take this risk every time they come out to supply this tower. Um... There's a slight bit of a, a man, a uh, manning issue because they're they're asking that people go back with them, um, and meanwhile the the people here at the tower are like, no, this is these are the people we need here at this tower. We're not going out there at night, and they mm -hmm. kind of get into an argument. Ooh, uh, we're at the first or the second tower. The second tower now. And everybody make a constitution save or a saving throw modified by any. Okay. Uh, the... I'll roll for Magnus. Rollo already failed the first one. You didn't give him hit point damage, though. Okay. Oh, gosh. Which is why I was asking, because he might not have been firing arrows, <laughs> depending on how much damage he took. What'd you get for Clark? I don't know for Algar. I'm trying to get his sheet. There it is. Uh, is this his or was this the other guy? Yeah, this is. Okay, uh, succeeded. All right. Well, uh, is it two damage? 
Yeah, so that's uh, two damage, yeah, for Father Bloombed. Now. And now to do saving throw on Alaric. Alaric passed the second. It's not Alaric. Uh, Rollo passed the second time, but failed the first time, so I still owe damage. Sure. Um, now you're in an interesting situation. Um, you're two hit points down. Uh, you've traveled this far. You are probably 30 minutes away um, via heavy snow uh, late at night from the entrance to uh, the Mouth of Doom. Uh, do you want to wait or enter? See, it's now the... Uh, I, I feel like we should wait. Also, like, can't the uh, caravan people stay here with us and then we could just go back with them tomorrow? You could if you don't want to enter the dungeon. You mean, like, stay at the tower? Is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. Like, we stay at the tower and so do they, and then we go into the Mouth of Doom tomorrow morning, and then we go, we escort them back tomorrow night. Yeah, the, the reason that they make this mad dash is because of the animals. Uh, oh, you, yeah. You don't have a colony out here, and you don't have a place to try to protect the, the horses. That's something, that's something we need to get set up at some point, but... That's that's why it would, it would be very good to maybe have, like, some legit colonies, you know, um, with some some different things here, that would be. Then you have a tavern here, and then you get to start right at the mouth of doom. <laughs> Save all kinds of time. You only need all like right. you know twenty thousand more gold for that to happen, so no big deal. Well, I'm okay with staying here overnight or uh, going into the dungeon right now, but I think it, either way we're going to have to return uh, by ourselves, from the sounds of it. Yeah, 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 yeah. for sure. Or you could, like, wait, you know, but that yeah. could be taken into account. Um, you know, okay. Let's see, the next day, the sun rises. Uh, the winds begin to pick up. But if you travel your 30 minutes down to the uh, the dungeon, it is otherwise uneventful. And uh, we could have healed a hit point? Yeah. So, if you took damage, how much did you get to heal? Uh, one hit point. Okay, how, how much damage did Rollo take? Oh, wait a minute. If, if we were going to sleep there, I could have cast my two Cure Light Wounds on me and Rollo. Oh, yeah. And then just got in the back the next morning. I think Rollo took at most 1d6, because he failed one save, I think? Yeah, one save. Yeah. yeah. But, it's, but a heal could be one you roll. There yeah, you he go. got seven. He got seven. That's fine. Okay, that sounds good, then. All right. So... As usual, if somebody can tell me how to get there, start uh, at whatever level you choose. Well, I suppose it's my responsibility at this point. We're going to the uh, the teleport network again. Is that my under? That's my understanding. Is that what everyone wants to do? Uh, unless Blue Bat has another choice. That's what I agree with. Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. Uh, whatever everybody wants to do. Okay, Chris. What are your thoughts? I think he's taking the dog out. Oh, yeah. right, yeah, he's emptying the dog. Uh, What's that, Lassie? Oh, wait, well, hold on. Uh, I wasn't here last week, but um, I did watch the video, and didn't he find out something about the pool? Yeah, about the uh, the pestilence pool. Uh, we Let me pull up the riddle again, because I don't remember. Yeah, I forgot about the riddle. That's, oh, God, it's been, Rid I, I'm so overworked. Riddle, 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 cat in the fiddle. Forgot about the existence of that. Okay. Book. The foul depths of hell afflict a necklace of that which touches filth. An offering of foul greetings, taken and not given. What is sacred to man is vile to demons. What is sacred to demons afflicts man until returned. So, that last part, until returned. So, something's afflicting man, pestilence, until we return it, whatever it is. And there was uh, there was a necklace of hands or something like that around the statue. Yes, there was a necklace of hands around the neck of the statue. Oh, see, I didn't see the statue. I wasn't there ever. So uh, I'm thinking maybe we have to bury that necklace in consecrated ground or something, perhaps. It has legs. I like the logic there. Worth a shot. You want us to try? Basically, you're proposing to go steal the necklace. Uh, I don't know that I have the right set of spells for that right now. All right. What spells do you have, if I may ask? 
Right now I have uh, two Cure Light Wounds, one Light, two Fine Traps, a Remove Curse, and a Sticks to Snakes. Not bad. Not bad. Alright. Alright, so the... Chris, welcome back. The proposal was made to cap try to capitalize on the information you got last session regarding uh, how to cleanse the fountain in the third floor of the Mouth of Doom. Yes. And the question is, do you want to try and move in on that? Do we have any ideas of what it means? The proposal was made to by Bloombad to retrieve the necklace of hands from around the neck of the statue of the defiled statue north of the pestilential pool right. steal that and go bury it in consecrated ground great idea 100 percent support okay and if uh, if i got like a protection from evil 10 foot radius spell which i do have i don't have prepared today we could probably do that maybe maybe easier we uh we would probably also want to load up on holy water likely so we know remember that those those demons that Alor which tangled with Alor they're small but they hit like tanks i, re and, I remember oh yeah I so if, if, if uh actually no and there's a brief in character moment of confusion is Dalt as algar tries to remember whether it was him or dalton who was involved in that fight <laughs> as he generally for a second cannot recall <laughs> I don't remember being there, so, you know, that's even better. I mean, if, if uh, Magnus had the fly spell, and I cast protection from evil 10-foot radius mm -hmm. on him, he could perhaps fly over there and grab the necklace while we held the uh, demons off. Potentially. I'd be hesitant to ask him to take point in any exercise of, of battle like that, though. Yeah, demons can also fly, can't they? Mm -hmm. but, if you're but if you are shielded by the protection from evil, they cannot touch you, as I understand it. Like, the protection from evil is pretty weak protection, but against powers of, like, the outer darkness, I don't think they can, like, touch you, as I understand it. Well. But that, I, we wouldn't be able to do that till next week anyway, so that's the yeah. only thing. I don't have that spell prepared. Lack the necessary, uh... So, with that in mind, do we want to do a scouting run on them and, like, see how they react? Or do we want to just go directly to the teleport nexus again? I mean, we've we've put like five hours into that teleport nexus already. I'm it does concerned that there. we might. Yeah, I'm concerned that we might get trapped somewhere. It's nice and warm though, compared to this place. Very well insulated. Chris, what are your thoughts? I uh, I suppose I'm in favor of the scouting mission. All right. Yeah, let's uh, let's do it. Okay. In that case, from the entrance, we enter into a rectangular chamber with two doors in the east, west, north, and one door to the north and south. Go through the south door. Then from there, turn to the east. At the T intersection, there is a pit trap, which we will uh, which we can sidestep over by taking stepping at the corner. Then south from there, that leads us to a right-hand turn, taking us to the west. We'll pass a door and eventually reach a L, a L shape in the corridor, which we go north. That leads us to a doorway and a intersection extending to the west, which we will follow. South from there, past a door to an empty set of barracks, which we might want to take a peek into to see if anyone has taken up occupancy, but probably best not to mess with it. South there and to a L intersection, and then east again to the uh, another L intersection, which will lead us south to the room with the green fire, which hopefully has not become inhabited by anything else. Uh, there is a secret door on the eastern wall of this area, which leads us through a crawl space underneath the statue in the room directly to the east. If we go down the stairs in the southeast corner of the room that used to have the leeches in it, and which presently has the big statue with the crawl space under it, that will lead us a good ways down to a chamber, which when we first breached it was full of roaches, which is large and oval shaped, extending north and south, with a doorway to the north and to the south, and we will come in from the east. We want to go out of that chamber from the south door, and from there we will enter a T intersection extending north, west, and east. From there we want to go west, 
And from there, if we hug the wall on our left side, uh, we will uh, reach the entrance to the teleport nexus, which will helpfully prevent us from entering it by accident because it repulses entrance. believe I think all of that was correct we good we good is your goal to go to the teleport nexus I don't think it is I think our goal is to just is to scout the uh, the pestilence the pestilential thing I think we're all a little tired of the teleport nexus sure um, how do you get to the uh, uh, to the thing that you're trying to scout uh, God, I can't remember exactly how you get to it from there like, I can remember the way, but not enough to recite it with my eyes closed. Mm. But I know it's to the north and east of our current position, and there's not too much in the way from where we are. I think you will need to find your way there. I agree. So don't you have the map that you can pull up? Oh, right. Yeah, yeah we I'm, have a map. I'm, I'm looking at a map right We're now. We're just always doing it from memory because we keep doing that same path all the time, but the rest yeah. of the path, we have a map. It's east out of this room, it looks like. And then north along the hall. Yes. And then at the end of that hall, there's like a T intersection. We turn left at it and then immediately jog north. Mm -hmm. And then to the east, there's a spiked something. Spiked shut door. Yeah, okay. I spiked that shut up. At one, I think it's open again, but it might still be I spiked thought, shut. I thought, it was, I thought it was a rude word. Uh, <laughs> now, an interesting uh, thing is, actually, that is where we will begin, because indeed, it is spike shot. Okay. Yeah, we did that when we were running for our lives. Mm-hmm. So, uh... I thought we would live to regret our own cleverness. <laughs> I did. I would have thought it. That's true. <laughs> we always live to regret our own cleverness. Let's see. Low, and that's it. So we got five people. Here they are. You, um, <clears throat> the door here is made of iron banded wood. Uh, you can, um, from this side, uh, it is jammed shut. I'll have to make a forced door check. Ah, it felt very clever at the time. Which means we're also going to make a hella noise. Um, on this map, there is no easier way to get at it from the other directions. I don't remember this level at all since I wasn't here. No, there is a way. It looks yeah. like. Yes, yeah, so if we go upstairs, and then we can go upstairs back the way we came. There's a couple exits down to the second level, but the safest one is probably the ladder hidden in the pit trap, just east of where this the exit lets out. That'll take it, or we can go through the uh, the hidden ladder in the the water in the alleged water pit. By the way, once we're there, we can. God, what does what does that place look like? Rummaging through the maps. If we had a silent spell, we could bang the hell out of that thing without worrying. But right now, we hit it. I don't know what it will come. Maps, maps, maps. Of course, you're balancing the time it takes to go the other way, which also includes chances of meeting things. So. Yes. That's for somebody to decide one way or the other which one looks best. Right, there's the other way is the one. I was thinking of the way that goes through the, uh, through the, the place where the path goes down into the water and then back up out again. You can reach the, that's not far from, uh, where the top, from the ladder leading down through the pool at all. Once we, if we get out of the ladder leading down through the pool, we just go south, then we head west, and that takes us to the room with the, uh, the mysterious mosaic of ourselves and the hidden stairwell to the south, which will take us right to the other side of the store. 
Or I could just kick this door down. Yeah, I, I say we just kick the door down. Kick I mean, if we down, get a wondering monster, work. we get it, yeah. you know. Yeah, if it's that much work, kick the door down, damn it. All right. Um, now, so this is what I'll say. Actually, everybody uh, can use the, um, the turn to make the check. Um, I mean, we can just start one by one. Uh, however, it does make a lot of noise. You're trying to force a door. Uh, rip uh, something out from the other side. So, uh, who goes? Who wants to go first? I'd look at Magnus, but uh, you know, I'll go first, I guess. Uh, do I have nope. All right, so that makes some noise. Where's the open doors button? Here it is. And uh, as soon as you try to force open the door, uh, it doesn't. It, uh, it the whole the door whoosh, like shakes, and from cracks in the walls, all of a sudden, uh, a, a, a roach that's like this big just like plops down, you know, onto your shoulders, Magnus, just like that, and then scurries off onto the ground away. <laughs> Well, it was mine, but you yeah, gross. I, I will. I will check him to make sure that there's nothing weird going on where it landed. Yeah, you take a look up, and you can see that uh, there's a crack in the ceiling, uh, a tiny one, but it is absolutely infested with these giant roaches that are like this big, and you can just see them wiggling around up there. Just a whole... Okay. Well, I meant I was going to check Magnus's back to make sure it didn't, like, uh, leave something on him or whatever. Ah, uh, yeah. No, it didn't. It was dry. All right. Well, I have great news for us and annoying news for Ross, which is to say I have a great tool for this, which is to say I have a hammer and chisel. I'm just going to... It may be possible for me to simply destroy the door. Ah, uh, yeah. I would oh, say... oh. Are, are the hinges on our side or the other side? Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll say that you could also just destroy the door. Uh, I, I'll, I'll say you can do that. Uh, it will take another turn, and it will make noise, but then the door will be permanently destroyed. This okay. door in particular, you find you could do, you could access the, you could wedge it uh, and, and, and rip it off the old rusty hinges. Uh, they're on the other side, but you can you can destroy the hinges from this side. Is that is that what you want to do? Yes, yes, so yes, yes. That is the case. No, I, didn't we? Didn't he, Ross, say that everyone can try to open it in this round? Or I think it would take some uh, well, The thing is that roaches may drop down on us. So. Got it. No, you're right. You're right. I see it. Plus, I've got to be honest. I just want an excuse to use this hammer and chisel. I've been looking sure. around for ages. Um, let's get rid of this. Door. Can we light up torch and like hold it underneath that crack to make sure that they're not coming down that way? All while right. he's working on the door so they don't plop on him. Let's see. Uh, uh I do not have a torch. I do have a torch. I will light up one of my five remaining torches. Alright. And I will keep it burning underneath the I'm not trying to burn them specifically, but I'm keeping it burning right underneath the crack. All right, in doing that, even if they're not, like, actually burned, you hear this, like, chorus as if all around you. Imagine entering a cave and how the cave just, like, erupts in a chorus of bat cries. Mm. Instead, you have the screeching, tinny uh, echoes of roaches as if around you, 300 feet around you, echoing through the holes all along mm. the walls. Mm -hmm. they, they didn't like that, but they stayed in their hole. It's as if this entire place is surrounded by giant fat roaches. Hmm. Gross. And uh, you ripped the door off. Uh, I'm not sure if that was necessarily the wisest course of action, but it was tremendously satisfying. No. Um, let's see. All together, 30 minutes. Uh, Algar, roll a d6. I'm sure we'll never regret this. Yeah. Two, just barely. You 
You hear noises echoing ahead in its hallway. Where? Danger from the north. Quick, take a hiding place. Let's make sure that they, we see that we see them on, on their terms and not ours. Or we uh, could uh, on our form a kill box around the door. If they're those disease things, the closer we are, the more danger we're in. Remember, we've seen them burst. I've never been here. I don't know. Oh, word of advice: if something staggers towards you and it's dripping with filth, don't let it touch you. Okay, that's that's usually a good safety thing to it, do. Yeah. yeah, but normally it's just. Normally it's just good sense. Here it may save your life. Okay. All right. Uh, what's the plan, Father Blue Bat? Uh, I, I'd say we actually film. I, I have three cure disease scrolls, so I say we just form a kill box around the door. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Um, I'll be on over here. I assume that kill box does not include Magnus. Correct. <laughs> Be like this kind of V where he can yeah, yeah uh, let's throw some darts attack or something yeah and uh, imagine Magnus throwing darts his f spork in his teeth I gave the spork like away cracks open and the, and this thing pulls itself the way through and uh, any spells or plans of it. Uh, do they look undead they definitely look undead not only do they look undead they look like mostly living, walking temples with uh, 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 exchanges of like fluid from one giant pimple to the other. These these things are just like uh, bloated masses of green fluid, a dark green fluid. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I will uh, hold my continual light holy symbol up and prepare to turn. Very well. Uh. And roll a d6 for initiative. Father Blue Bat. Or you are also able to act first. Uh, if you're moving, you can do that. And then uh, missile fire. Your uh, target AC is 15. By all kills, you just wear for Roni. Oof. All right. Okay. Uh, no other missiles or movement. Uh, they will now move, and they predictably... Oh, Sorry, okay. I, for Rilla. I forgot about him. So hit two damage. I doubt the 11 hit. Uh, the 18 does hit uh, for two damage. Um, okay, and then okay. they, uh, they move in uh, to this. Uh, they can kind of fit in here. Almost all, basically all of them. It's about a 10 foot space they can fit. Two in one, two in the other. Um, and uh, unless you wanted to tighten it around one 10 foot square so only two could, three could fit in. Yeah, I, I would that. think that would be the proper kill box where we limit their uh, accessibility yeah. to the area. Yeah, that's the maximum they can do. And since they're using claws, they can not do that actually interesting yeah only two All right so two of them make it in they're not that smart anyway um and uh you can do your melee attacks if you want you see 15 all right decide if it makes sense is there any way i can dedicate my turn to defense to boost my armor class because i feel like just keep it staying alive long enough to uh, bloom bad to turn these things it makes more sense than letting out the juice no it's included in your uh in your math i think already only yeah. a fighter gets that all right i will just chop him with a sword then i will try algar attempts to lance one of them so that it squirts onto the floor instead of him it does not work right. and then uh see uh and then all right so that's it and then spells uh turning the undead these are uh two hit dice zombies five uh yeah destroyed uh let me roll my 2d6 to see how many hit dice 
Two of them. Ooh. Two of them are two hit dice. Or all, no, two all, hit two, dice. all two hit dice, yeah. Uh, you, uh, what do you, what, what it? happens when you raise... What is it? Oh, no, no, it's 2d6 yeah. undead creatures of the targeted type are automatically turned. Right, because you made the check. Uh, yeah, okay, so... Two, um, what do you do when you raise your holy symbol? What do you what do you do? I just I hold the holy symbol up and say, uh, um, "Back whence you came, go unto the light." Uh, and you, a uh, in cracks nearby, you can actually see light. We're in, and uh, these two burst like uh, like dark green pus filled pimples. Uh, fortunately, they only splatter among your uh, your armored boots, and and then the other two are out of the room. Good tactic. So, top of the round, uh, turn undead again. Can I turn again? Or no? Yeah, I I mean unless it's unless I'm getting that mixed up with with basic again, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't say. Pretty sure it yeah, says. Yeah, I will. I will do it again. Sure. Think right. I think it says. Uh, well, I don't I'm pretty confident. I played a cleric as my first character in this. I don't remember. Well, I, actually, I'll just rule that for now. But I'm pretty sure it does not say how many times you can turn, which I, in, I interpret every rule as liberally right. as, as, uh, yeah, yeah. as it's presented. So. AD and D specifically addresses right. it. I don't think this does either. All right. Yeah, I will. I will do it again. All right. Uh, roll a d6, Father Lunda. Uh oh, gotta get a six. A four. Uh -huh. I'm moving these bodies out of the way. Um, they are going to move. Can I miss that? Are they considered in melee now? Uh, yes. Okay. All right. Is is a staff a reach weapon? I don't think so. Is it? Does anybody know that? I think you. I don't. I don't think that's for that. Yeah. I'll check real. I'll check real quick. Thank you. Yeah. Equipment. Ba, 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 In the meantime, it's usually a five foot long staff, right? Yeah. But uh. Yeah. There's like a specific like. You swing it holding the middle. Um. Yeah. I'm thinking not, but. Um, uh, I mean, technically, you could grab it by the base and. and yeah. Another two but, feet down and. I'm not going to get. I'm not going to get pedantic them. about it, but yeah, like. Uh, that's why I'm just asking. In real life. They were definitely used that way. Sure. Okay. But I'm, I, I, yeah, I just want to. Uh, a two-handed set. Yeah, it's, uh, it says it's. It's, it's. There's not a, a specific descriptor for yeah. like can attack from the second rank. All right. Um, let's see. Does a twelve hit Alaric? I think not. Nope. All right. They both miss. It's your all's turn. Any melee attacks? Yep. Stab for three. Oh, it's our turn. Three? Dead. Okay. I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yes, I hit. Nice. Um, all right. You, uh, you wound both of them. Father Bloom Dad, I guess. Eight. 2d10, so 8, and then... Oh, again two. with 2 one. Now That's all you need, I think. They also... Yeah, but that's like impressive. Yeah, that's, that's impressive. Four ones in a row for that. And uh, you just have this disgusting, uh, slimy goop on the floor and tattered clothes that they once wore. And, um... Unfortunately, you hear the sounds of echoing pain and misery further ahead down this hall farther away. Did we, did we hear that the last time we were here? No. Alright, well, I mean, we're here to reconnoiter, right? Let's move in. All right. Algar uses his sword to try to move the corpses to a safer distance and then sterilizes it in the flame of a torch. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, we moment. should uh, sterilize our boots too. I'm not lighting them on fire while I'm wearing them. <laughs> well, we should just burn the goo. Uh, you hear the uh, the moans of, and pains of echoes of pain and uh, misery further ahead 
but it also sounds kind of diffuse as if it just is emitting from this uh, this green kind of in the middle uh, the, the map doesn't represent it but in the middle in the darkest points it's a dark green but at the, at the farthest points it's almost bright green I Yes, there's okay. I have an idea. So we should we should look around the corner first and see what we're dealing with. You want to try to peek around the corner? I, that's what I said to Father Bloomberg. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do it. Okay. Uh, let me see. I think it might be worth actually just kind of going over this again so you know what you have to work with if you want to try to make a play. Um, you, uh, I know that you don't go here, and I know you're being careful when you move around this stuff and don't try to touch it and things, but I'm going to move you here just so you can see things. Uh, okay. In the, in the VTT. Oh, wow, that's pretty helpful. impressive. Oh, that's cool. So let me describe this area one more time. I actually have to zoom the VTT out because it is a vast area. Um, it is, uh, let's see, from top alcove to bottom, it is uh, about 60, 70 feet north to south. And um, it says that uh, this huge room reeks with the smell of rot and disease. There is an overwhelming miasma that rises from a huge central pool of pus and filth. At the middle of the pool, a horrid liquid fountains upwards to a height of five feet, as if active, as if it were some horrid courtyard to some pestilent hell. Five large rivulets of fluid trickle away from the fountain, forming water courses of it, uh, courses of this pestilence that thread their way through the floor and disappear down corridors through gaps in the walls to elsewhere. The room itself is obviously once a holy temple of the light. A huge alcove in the northern part of the room contains a ten-foot statue. It, the ten-foot statue is a benevolent-looking figure wearing white robes. Uh, it would probably be easiest if I just show you the picture here instead of trying to do a handout so just show you what this looks like real quick and then i'll have it go away oh um, the necklace of hands i see it the statue is splashed with blood and filth a grisly necklace made of human hands is draped about the statue's neck like some kind of psychopathic offering all of them are left hands the ones missing uh that you found before uh, you can see um, that in the pool it's burbling and you hear these mo moans and noises and uh, as you peek around the corner the pool responds to your presence and things begin to form in the fountain substance but they have not completely formed yet how fast are they forming uh, a matter of minutes. Matter of minutes. Yes. Okay. I cast fly. All right. And I go and grab that sucker now. All right. Uh, let me see here. If he's whooshing into the air to go snag it, I may try and sprint. If it makes sense to the rest of the group, I may sprint up behind him to be ready to run interference. If something is already here, ready to get is it get to get him? You know what? I, I do have a scroll of protection from evil. Can I cast that on him before oh, while he's all, casting? Oh, please, fly? by all means. Hey, I'll buy you a drink later, my friend. Okay, so you cast protection from evil. Is that right? Yeah, on him. Yes. Okay, it says that uh, creates a magical field, uh, blocking out all enchanted monsters. Uh, fascinating. So you cast that, and then you cast fly, and you're going to try to get the necklaces? Yes. 
all right um, these things they uh, they continue to coalesce and grow as you uh, give this benediction and uh, fly toward over this pool uh, you can see that there are things in this pool figures uh, some of them humanoid some of them turning back into that temple that pustule covered people you can see they're missing their left hand and uh, every once in a while they'll raise up a nub uh, and a right hand up out of the pool as they're they're struggling to escape their torment and uh, she you uh, you grab the necklace and uh, and then fly back probably have about a minute left uh, as these things uh, begin to coalesce. So back to these uh, is there struggle. any chance the you hear that uh, po poem okay. again? I will recite the poem. One moment. Yeah, I'm reading the poem. It's on... It, Doki, you can search for it, but read it. Okay. The foul depths of hell afflict, a necklace of that which touches filth, an offering of foul greetings, taken and not given. What is sacred to man is vile to demons. What is sacred to demons afflicts man until returned. Return to where? Perhaps the yeah. the filth? But then oh, we lose it if we, we're wrong. Yeah. If we, yeah, if we throw the left hands at the left handless creatures, perhaps they disappear. Where's the left handless creatures? They're inside the fountain. Oh, Try yeah, it. then definitely. Oh, that answers okay, that question. Well, then I'll. If that's the consensus, I'll. I'll, I'll if fly I'm wrong, above. I'll go fetch it. Well, we're yeah, wrong. If we... wrong. <laughs> oh no, God, please. Oh. Okay, I do just that. I drop the there hands in there and sit away. It's, it's because I it. work harder than Dalton doesn't mean I'm any saner. Don't make that mistake. Um, let me find this. Because I was thinking it had to get thrown into the fountain, but I'm worried about the, if we're wrong, how do you get it? But the fact that you just <laughs> said that those creatures have missing the hand they're in the fountain because i was reading the the thing not looking at the screen so now i see yeah they're in the fountain so that's perfect that that dovetails whether the, the poem means return it to the fountain or return it to the people who lost it there you go both are in the same place he find something in fact i don't care what ross says that's what it is i don't think he even should look it up <laughs> <laughs> it's so obvious that's what it is <laughs> Uh, we should work that way. And of course it becomes a, a a holy avenger sword good for any fighter class afterwards. It becomes 3,000 gold pieces that I need to complete my spell. It uh, becomes a hand of glory, which when lit turns us invisible, but only uh, against ferrets. I thought it let you fly. Uh, the, the, the warlock with Julian Sands. need something for this. <laughs> GM says, I got something for you, right? Yeah. <laughs> I got something for this. So, Magnus, what's the spell name that you're researching? It's called Magnus's Minor Misconstruence. Gotcha. I think we're going to have to go with something modern. Can't find the thing I'm looking for, so I just have to go. Like that YouTube song. Maybe, maybe this one? Uh, you throw the, the necklace of hands into the fountain, and um, I don't have a change of the map for this. Uh, but uh, the uh, the act the fountain actually begins to gurgle as if it's a person uh, making noises uh, as if it has a voice, and um, it uh, it then begins to drain into the floor, and all of the goop and the the pestilence and stuff gathers into the center of the pool, and uh, begins to seep back into the underworld. Unfortunately. The uh, there it looks like like pods of like filth around the, the fountain, which now becomes dry, 
and uh, those things which were laying in there, though the fountain has receded back into where it came from, it has left here the things that it was making. Mm. Um, uh oh. And these things uh, come up out of that goop. These little, these little green flying dudes. They're still missing a hand. Uh, the they they were not missing hands. These are these okay. were not the things that were like people. Uh, Got it. See if I can show you one. Yeah, they look like this. And they fly and they're dripping that snot. Gotcha. Uh, the ever popular knife baby. I have a <laughs> really bizarre number of those in my games. It's it's really uncomfortable. I don't know why that. No one likes to get stabbed by knife baby. No. No, it's the worst. <laughs> uh, any spells? We get to do some. Shield. Knife baby. Yeah. All right. Yeah, you cast. You, you don't need shield. You got a uh, protection from evil still. Oh, true, true, true. Sorry, yeah. web, web. They shouldn't be able to touch you. Web. Now I'm gonna make little little nubs here of where I think these things. You can see these things, so you can tell me where you want web to go. They're just basically. Oh, I need it to be like a brighter. Maybe like a well, red. Well, it sort of matters where they end up. Right. It, so it like, matters whether they move before. Essentially, I mean, they're going like to move. Clusters of them all around the fountain. Like that. Magnus, do you know if the uh, if if your protection lasts through offensive actions? Bill McLaughlin. Oh I yeah, it, it, it's a duration thing. Okay, so it's you can cast magic missile, lightning bolts while you're in there, and they can't touch you. Got it. Yeah. All right. So where do you cast web? Right here, or do you cast it on one of the pods? Or where you put it? Um, so we haven't rolled initiative yet. Uh, declaring spells. I just want to know what spells and stunts and plans and actions y'all have. Well, yeah, I, I didn't... Yeah, I suppose right across there where their pods, right? You said they, they come out of the pods now? Are they starting to fly? Uh, yeah, these are, these are coming out of those pods and these are starting to fly. The others are still in them. Well, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't think... Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I, was plan I was planning on uh, targeting it up once it was time to cast it. But, uh... Okay, so, oh, I mean, you, yeah. Let me know what you're. No, yeah. Tell me what you're doing with the spell. Where, where you, where, where you, you're going to cast a web and, you, and what, what yeah. are you? Yeah, I mean, I'm a, I, I'm going to try to halt their advance. You know, I, I, I'm going to center it on. Rather than a point, I'm going to center it on one of them, basically. Uh, not center it, but have the front of it be on, on uh, let's say, this guy. Oh, I misread this. These things have not finished for me yet. Um, okay, so, but you can hold this and, and be prepared to cast it. So you're going to cast... Oh. You're going to cast web on it. Uh, these things are forming. And, and then out of the pool nearby are two of these fellows. And um, and then those things pop out. Okay, and then Father Bloombad, any spells? I'm going to uh, turn. All right. Uh, roll a d6 initiative. All right, you are also able to act first. Uh, movement Oops, and I... missile fire. All right, I take point. I soak up damage. It's what I do. But I will go ahead and fire off a shot with my sling since I am not in melee. Yeah, you just stay up front. Cause, okay. Actually, no, I'm not. These things aren't going to be affected by sling stones. What am I talking about? Just keep my sword ready. All right, any other so, missile fire? Uh, No missile fire. All right. They is Ro Ro is Rollo shooting? Yeah, I I uh, tell. Uh, I thought you guys said they don't get affected by missile. Why waste his arrows? Uh, we don't know that. We don't. Oh, you don't know that. Shooting. Oh, okay. Sorry. I thought you, because I haven't been here, so I thought you knew something. All right, then he's going to try firing at the. Uh, well, can he see those zombies? Yeah. Uh, I can turn well them. I can turn them. That, that he's pretty sure that he can hit. 
Wait, um, Bloomberg can turn them. Okay. Well, then tell me to fire at the demon. I'll fire at the demon. All right. It's uh, okay. armor class 16. Armor and class that's 16. a miss. And that's another miss. All right. Uh, let's see here. They can move two. nine. Pretty fast. Normally fast. So they can make it. So they... Uh, so they are moving this now? Or yeah. the... They are, they are doing their movement. And these things are not fast. I think they, they're going to act at the end of the round no matter what. And uh, if I recall correctly. Wait, uh, let me get this clear. The, all the red circles are additional pods from which more of those demon things are emerging? Um, something is emerging, but you don't know what. But it looks oh. like there's something pulsing underneath. Okay. Okay. And the water is is better or the same at the moment? Because I know you described what would happen, but is that yeah? It yet? doesn't it doesn't look like the map. So all these like rivers of, of stuff, yeah. it's just like a nose, just like pulled in all the snot and then it's like pulled it down gotcha. into the fountain right. back into the underworld. Yep. Uh, you did say that. I just my brain forgot it already. Yeah, no problem. Uh, da, 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 da. uh where, 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 it sounded familiar as soon as you said it. I think we were at melee. Melee, yeah. Um, melee, yeah, you all can attack if you want. Armor class. I have time. Uh, 16. 16. Go, Algar. How many hit points do you have? Doesn't matter, it's not gonna be enough. Mm. <laughs> Alright, so let's see. Shortly here. after Algar was killed. Four. All right, and uh, I think we're going to get a turn. And a web goes off. Yes. And, and you were targeting these people. Is that yes. The, okay. So you cast a web there. They put a big web on it, so we know it's there. Big web. A oh. bill web. Mm -hmm. uh, that should that should effectively halt uh, any further problems approaching from that direction. Indeed. There is a web there, and it does do that. Interesting. Oh, it's handy to have a wizard. Stick it with the spear while well, it's my last web. Well, actually, no, I got scroll. All right, turn undead. I accidentally clicked it. I was getting it ready, and I uh, so I rolled a 17, which is a turn. All right. That's 10, 10 undead creatures. Hey, it's better than two. All right, these things just it explode. Really they pop. And uh, I think it would affect the other things nearby, because they are there. Uh, and there's only like a membrane separating them. But let me see if any of these are affected. No, <laughs> unfortunately. Um, okay. Uh, all right, so you pop those, and that gets rid of a few of these... Pods, basically. We're coming. Um, I don't know how to get rid of the writing. But anyways. Right. Well, anyway, uh, let's see. Uh, they are able to... I, I assume you, like, step back out of their range, right? I mean, like, you're not, you're not going to stay right next to them. Yes. Right? Yeah. Oh. Greatest weakness of my baby is reach. Got stubby so, arms and the knife is short. They do have a short knife. Pick them with the spear. Yeah, you, you're going to start attacking them with the spear. Now, we can kind of fast forward some things that are going to uh, happen here. Um, uh, they are very strong uh, and uh, they have an unearthly magical power. So uh, they've got two turns, which is what, 20 rounds? Mm -hmm. So. Um, you can go ahead and with the spear. You have just one spear or more than one? I, mean, uh, I think we've got we one just, magic spear. Yeah, I think we just have. I don't remember anyone else using a spear. Uh, if you start stabbing these things, uh, do they I mean, create fire or anything, or are they intelligent enough to create fire? Because if not, then then I'll start rolling. Yeah, my thought is like just chuck uh, like. 10 d20s and see how it goes yep sounds good 
Cause you can do that in roll twenty. Yep, I'm typing it. And then I'll, I'll I'll tell you what happens while that while that happens. Using them for a dartboard. If something else happens. Whoa. Whoa. That's me not typing very well. Roll ten D twenty. I don't oh, underscore five, god damn it. Plus five. See the typing is so tiny, my eyes aren't good for this. I can't tell what I've typed wrong or right. Okay. So can you, uh, can you enlarge this creature so we can get a look at him? I didn't even hit once in ten hits. Well no, I guess plus five, uh each one. Yeah, I did hit. Never mind. They didn't add the plus five to each one of them. But I didn't hit very many times. Out of those 10, I hit two 16s. If 16 was number three 16s and 19, so it's four. That's four times. Four times, it looks like. Four okay. out of 10, not so great. All right, yeah, go ahead and roll for damage. That, and that it was seems important. 10 times, uh, 10 rolls, right? Okay. And then you'll have like another 10. Yeah, we'll just. How many arrows have points. we pumped into these guys? Yeah, you got arrows too. Uh, so let me, let's just kind of see how this goes. Um, you roll oh, what are those things? Your damage is. Is okay. it, it? It may actually be. A, it may actually be that you will not kill these things. So I, I think it's starting to matter. <laughs> what are these okay, things behind 10, it? Twenty-two. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll describe that in a second. All right. So like, you kill one. Uh, you're able to to kill. You're able to kill them. I, I needed to kind of have a sense of the math. When you add arrow fire to that and people taking the risk of throwing darts and, you know, everything that you can at it, stepping up, swatting with a, a sword, uh, it is possible to kill them. Um, meanwhile, there are the, a swarm of 20 gigantic between dog and cow-sized rats. Mm. Now, this has happened while they're, like, stabbing into the, the web with a spear and stuff, so... If you have sleep or anything like that, you can use it. Yes, I do. That I have. All right. Uh, do these are these creatures have wings? I, I can't. They're so small. I can't see the. Uh, no, those are just little, little rats. These are rats. giant rats. Oh, big, these, big rats. Oh, then I'm gonna cast a spell. Oh. Oh, yeah, that one. Okay. Uh, oh, what you casting? I'm gonna cast Should sticks I... to snakes. And I'm going to take that bundle of sticks I had. <laughs> nice. How long do the snakes stay around? Uh, they stay around four. They also have to get um, through the web. You have to. Oh, yeah. I'm going to, you know, I'm going to hold on until ah. the last possible moment. Okay. Good to know, though. All right. Meanwhile, uh, sleep. Uh, go ahead and cast it. All right. Well, uh, what's the hit dice? Uh, you yeah, sorry, it does vary. Let me see here. It is... Because um, I basically have to choose a group here. One hit die. One. All right, uh, then in that case, I'll go for the rat. They're all one, including the centipede things no, or whatever? No, just, uh, just the... Uh, okay, just the rats. I'm focused on the rats then. It's 2d8. Max rolling for the win. Nice. Now you have Wowzers. an interesting well, problem. All of these things glow green as well of note. Oh, great. With their, uh, but um, yeah, they uh, you put all asleep except four. Oh, my eyeballs did a good count. It's a four or five. Any other magic tricks now? Because this is all occurring over 20 minutes as you just basically siege uh, the, the remains of what this demonic entity left behind. So did we all fire tricks. our arrows into the the demons you were saying? Yeah, you fire all your arrows into the into the demons and you slay them. Well, uh, yeah, uh, I still have arrows. I didn't fire any of mine. No, I'll say that, I, yeah, we, did, we're, we won't do all that math. I, I just needed yeah. your attacks gave me a sense of the math, and I'll say yeah, that you're yeah. able to kill the mm -hmm. demons. Okay. In the in, meantime... Well, how much longer do we have on the web? Yeah. So. Oh, the web, the duration is way long, way longer than any okay. of this. But it's, it, well, it's, I'll hold it's a matter of how much damage has been done to it over the course of uh, of us. Yeah. 
it's it's bad. Uh, yeah, the, these the, there's this just gigantic swarm and army of these things, and they're eating and tearing away at it as fast as they can. There's All right. Now, them. what hit dice are those? Indeed, uh, they are. Because um, I got another sleep here, and I got three more scrolls of it. Well, can you say if you want to cast it, and then you then you'll find out? Yeah. I mean, I'm going to cast it one way or the other, but I need Got to know it. what dice to roll. Uh, um, right. These are giant. And so they are... Um, Giant centipedes, fascinating. They are ju they are gargantuan. They're twenty feet long. Uh, four hit dice. In that case, I can get one, and I get one, and then I with, sl with sleep. Uh, yes. Okay. All right. You get one to go to sleep. Um, I have three more scrolls of sleep. Uh, in that time, you can attempt to cast that. You know. Is, it only takes you 10 seconds, uh, you know, uh, but it takes uh, on the order of, you know, portions of hours to get this through this web. So you can you can attempt before they burst through to try to put more asleep if you want. Yeah. Well, yeah. Well, are, are there more things showing up? Nope. This is it, as far as you can see. Okay. So I'm going to... I'm not worried about the rats anymore, the four rats. So I'm going to spend the other three scrolls of sleep on three more of these giant centipedes because they mean business. That's no joke. All right. Go for it. Is that just like automatically put? It's just automatic rats? one. Yeah, because there's no nothing to roll. It's just four, four hit All dice. Right. Yeah. All right. Here we go. You got. Oh, I am expending <laughs> great amounts of my resources here. Three scrolls. Is this that feels right? like the place to do it. Three well, scrolls of sleep, yes. Poison. I've cast it twice, and I've cast it three more times. <laughs> All right. There is no governing intelligence left that can tell them, hey, dummies, wake up your allies. I always say the monsters don't know what they're doing. But they are able to burst through, finally. And now you can use your sticks to snakes if you want. Oh, yeah. 2d8. Seven snakes, and there's yeah. a 50% chance that they're poisonous. They're being venomous, yeah, so that is... Uh, Sorry, how many? Seven snakes. Uh, seven of them. I'm going to give you control of your snakes. By so only by. one, two, three, four of them are venomous. Uh, four are venomous. I'm going to tag them with like a yellow tag to indicate they're poisonous snakes. And you have control of them. And now we're at the top of the order. And we can see in your little minor pestilent kaiju battle who's going to win here first. Mm -hmm. uh, or we can see if these pestilent monsters <laughs> give it to you. Um, yeah, God. so any other spells. So now we're back to normal combat. So all that happened over like 20 minutes of like a siege of this thing. No spells. All right. Roll I, a d6, I... Father Bloomdad. Look at d6. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. They're able to act first. Uh, the uh, giant centipede is going to attack the snakes. Um, 3d8 and lethal. And it does... Nat 20. Uh, the snake. Can you make oh. a uh, save for your snake? Sure. You know if that saves for a snake? I don't think it's in. Uh, I don't think it's in. Um, I th if I recall correctly, there are no snakes in Swords and Wizardry. Um, I don't know. I'd say that borderline. I think the killer bee has a 12 poison save. Let's do that. We'll say it passes. Okay. Nonetheless, it still takes damage, and it does 3d8 damage. Oh, that's going to kill it. Right here. Uh, seven damage to this snake. Does that kill it? Yeah, I'm sure it's dead. Okay. Oof. It, was uh, that one of the poisonous no, ones? Or no, no, it was not. It just, it just attacked the nearest one. 
to start start chomping okay. at it. Uh, these uh, they will enter combat against your poisonous ones. I've got two giant rats. They're not much to write home about. But we'll see. One gets a 19 for uh, two damage and two damage on this one, and then uh, the other two rats does a 12 hit. Your snake? Uh, I would assume so. Okay, yeah, that's right. Twelve, that's right. Uh, for one damage. Okay, so, all right. Now it's the the snake's turn. All right. So, uh, the four poisonous ones are going to go against the centipede. Nice. So well, maybe in, two hits. They're in melee. I will uh, allow them to move the two here if they have a uh, if you give them an opportunity attack, or if you accept one, I'll let them move. This one can move, he's mm -hmm. not melee. Okay. They are armor class 14 on vipers. Nice. Okay, that would be a poisonous snake. Yeah. They don't give an armor class for non-poisonous snakes, I guess, but We'll just whatever. go with 14. We'll just go with yeah. 14, yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. That they're Actually, yeah, Python's the only one with the worst one. The rest of them are 14. Right. And these are these are pustulant um, creatures. It all of them. One d six hit points. Yeah, that, that's the biggest probably threat you see is these things are covered in those green pustule. Um, okay, so the the two the two will go for vipers. Or I mean, the two vipers will go for the uh, rats, rats, and the okay. other two will go for. And you uh, have a third poisonous one up here if you want that one too. Actually, you got. Yeah, he will. Four. He'll he'll take an opportunity attack. If that's what you said. No, no, he doesn't need so, uh, to move. But these two, if you're doing rats, you can. Attack yeah. Them. But one one rat is it's a fifteen on one rat, and then it's a sixteen on the centipede. Uh, fifteen, sixteen. Uh. Crap. Sorry. Uh, centipede. Where you at? Centipede is uh, armor class nineteen against this monstrous oh, so centipede. Misses. Holy then I have the regular snakes, which... How much how many snakes the rats do I have? Again? Uh, so one of the poisonous snakes attacked a rat. He got a 15. Right, that easily kills him. And then the one, the 16, was at the centipede, which was a miss. And they, if, and if you want to treat them as the regular snakes, they're plus two on, on saving throws versus lethal poison. A cobra is just a saving throw versus lethal poison. Oh, and there's what, what? There's four regular snakes left, or there's? Is that uh, correct? Let's see. You got two poisonous and two regular. What I'm counting. Right. Oh, oh, only two. Okay. Regulars right, are so only doing one point of damage. So that they miss then. Okay, they miss. All right. Uh, let's see. Roll a d6 again. Oh wait a minute. Can I attack? Uh, yeah, if you want to get up there and uh, attack. Yeah, I mean, I can, I can sling. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Anybody oh, yeah. Else? Yeah. I'm shooting my arrows, yeah. yeah you oh, wait, can. did we burn all our ammunition centipede. on the demons? I didn't get to fire anything. <laughs> Not true. It's a 16 for 2 at the centipede. Oh, he, yeah, he's 19. Of course, I won't hit because I have the worst. Uh, what are you firing at, Father Bloombed? Actually, Alaric. Oh, the centipede, definitely be stabbing you said he was with the spear because you can attack safely from uh, breach. Yeah, 19, that's right. Okay. I missed. Good point. Okay. Uh, anybody else? The you spear. Want to attack, the do it spear. Now? Attack the, uh, the yes. centipede thingamajiggy for four damage. Uh, you uh, missed oh, by miss one. It. Oh, this thing is damn it. Huge. The armor class in this thing is off the chain. The armor class 19? 19, that's right. Wow. Okay. Tightness. All right. Uh, I got no chance of hitting this thing. Well, got a 10% chance of hitting this thing. Nope. Nobody else? Unless I was blessed. All right. Uh, in that case, I got a six, Father Blimbad. And I five. Ooh, close. Was you get a good to job. Act first. Um, Twenty plus. See, so I think that's gonna miss. Um, Large giant centipede does a plus four to hit with a. Yeah. So that misses. Uh, Wait, what's this? Yeah, that's right, it misses. And then we got three little rice, uh, mice. No big deal. Yeah. Uh, actually, I think those are going to hit two of them. And then I think there's um, a... Uh, 
chance of poison. But Ross. Yeah. Go ahead. Was there a weight limit on my wand of attraction? Um. Well, what what are what are what are you thinking? What it's I'm thinking crazy. is, I want to attract that statue to the floor right below where that centipede is. Uh, oh, ho, hold on, that's a holy object, son. Yeah, that doesn't sound right to me. That don't sound legit. <laughs> Hypothetically, would that be possible with this <laughs> wand of attraction? I I, uh, I think if you used your wand of attraction, uh, I'll make a deal a de deal with the devil with you. You can topple this statue if your holy man's okay with it. It'll you will slide it and then topple it, but there's a chance that it could. Uh, you know, hit you all because it's going to be really clamorous, and it's just—it's going to be pretty catastrophic. This huge okay. stone statue is going to we, come. We need another. We need another big object. Um. Um. Oh. Anyway. It's a cool idea, uh, and I'm down. Uh, what about these stuff. rocks over here? Well, how these much? How, yeah, how much of this is accurate? Are, are there are there big stones laying around? I mean, I. I I, I didn't really think of that as like a thing that you can. It's more like if to compare it to five E like Mage Hand, like it's meant to, you know, take two things and bring them together. It's not meant to like, ah, it's not like Darth Vader using Force <laughs> or something. Well, or you know. Objects. I I have a question. Does anybody remember what two things I got from that fairy thing? Because I didn't write it here. Uh, one I used that that I you know remember I. But, uh, and there's no more attacks, right? I don't remember. Yeah, all right. In case there was something that could be used for that, but I don't remember. I think... Okay. Oh, hit Two points. Hit. It was some massive hit points. Yeah. Right, let's see. Four and three. So this takes four damage. This one takes three damage. And uh, it's Roll's turn. All right. Let me see again. You said I only have Reverse technology left, works right? every time. Sorry, what were you saying? You've only got four snakes remaining? So that's what Ross said last time, right? Okay, so you got one, two, three, four, five, six snakes, three of which are poisonous. Oh, okay, okay. Four, four damage four on that big. Section. All right, the four poisonous snakes are just going to move to attack the uh, All right, centipede. Two. You can give them opportunity attacks sure. if necessary. And they miss. Let me cycle them around here so that... We can just kind of. Do they have a they have a plus to hit? Did you say that? Uh, the... they are uh, one hit dice creatures, so no plus to hit. Ah, uh, okay. And uh, and... and I did four damage on the chitin thing. On the centipede? Yeah. Oh, okay. But one of the regular snakes is not twenty on the centipede. Where is? Before the... I take my action, I'd like to take a second to like turn to Magnus and say. Do you have anything left in the tank? Yes. I was just about to ask Ross to just give me the description on that uh, sad face druid circlet. I could roll a d6, I think, if I remember correctly, and then get like a random druid spell, or I can get a spell of a random druid level. Uh, so. What did I, uh, whatever I gave you at the time is what. Yeah. All right. I put my hand on Magnus' shoulder and I say, if I die, you must retrieve my head and provide it to Omendark. You understand? And then I draw my sword and I get into the oh, breach to try and finish this well, thing hold, off. Hold up, hold up. Okay. Um, I'm holding. Wait, are we starting another initiative round now? I, th I haven't attacked yet this round, so I oh, think okay. it goes. Yeah, no attack. Never mind. Uh, okay. Uh, Oh, please roll high. I sure don't. Okay. All right, and then all the snakes attacked it. And how much damage did yes. you say you did, Alaric? I did four. Four damage, okay. The one, the one normal snake got a nat 20 on the uh, centipede. Okay, and for how much damage? So he does one damage. Oh, one damage, okay. Yeah. It's bite plus poison on the poison ones. And the bite is always one hit point, even on the poison ones. 
of Algar. Okay, so everybody has done their uh, to hit their uh, their their attacks. So I think we're back at the top of the round now. Yeah, what what is it that I gave you? You want to try to use the? Uh... Well, I'm just wondering, was it was I right? In, is it like a D? I think it's a D six. Just like you get to cast one druid spell of D six level. Um. Whatever I gave you at the time, and because I don't okay. have that, I, I would have to like go back in my notes. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Well, it, it's a last a resort. Specific level. I mean, sorry, specific spell. I think it, you just told no. Me I it I think it was a D six druid level spell. Right. That's what I'm saying. Um, you didn't give a specific one. It's just a D six level. Right. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, do I mean, you wanna... he's got, they got all these snakes to deal with. You might want to wait. I mean, this might. Yeah, no, I am going to wait. I have one more thing to do if we're rolling initiative again. Okay. What's that? I'm, I'm going to declare scroll. I found a scroll of magic missile. Ah. <laughs> very well. All what right. the hell? <laughs> uh, and I'll roll a d6. Yeah. Guaranteed damage is good here. Exceedingly really good. Five. And Father pulls it first. out of the hat again. All right, uh, any missile fire or movement, you all can do that now. Missile fire. Four damage with a sling. Nice. That's on that centipede. All right. Crushing sling damage. That does not hit it. Whoa. Neither does that. All right. So let's see, uh, and then your snakes. All right, I got three poisonous left. Correct. You've got. Ooh, that's you've got you've got four poisons. Oh, four one poisons. more poison. Yeah. All misses, right. and then okay. two regular. Oh, no, okay. Sorry, I it was nineteen. All misses. Miss two. Okay, uh, and then your spell. Does the thing get an attack? I hate to remind you of it, but uh... it, it it does, but it'll do it on okay. melee and yeah. Magic. Okay, well, magic missile then. It's just D four plus one, if I remember correctly. I think it's uh, you get you get more hit. than one. Oh, I'm you level. Can either do an automatic D four, or you can. I'm level five. So you get what three? So four? I don't think I get. Man, I've never cast this spell before. Yeah, yeah. You... Is it a scroll or an is it you? Additional two missiles for every five levels of experience. So at fifth level, but it is it's, a scroll. It's a so scroll. It... So it might it's be a scroll level. level. I have yeah. no idea. It, there's no notation as to the scroll level. Uh, I think it's fine. Uh, you can do the. Uh, um, uh, you can use it as as the spell, uh, but the the magic missile spell. Um... I'm not going to roll to attack. Ah, okay. Uh, so magic I'm just going to do D4 plus one, or uh, every five levels. So yeah, I, I get to throw three three missiles. Wow. Yeah. Did you write the scroll, or did somebody else? Yeah, I think somebody. else I honestly wrote don't that. remember. Yeah, I don't else, remember. Yeah. yeah, if somebody else wrote it, then it might be at a higher level, which would let's, cast more missiles. I think uh, uh, let's go with let's go with what you got. I think that makes a lot of sense. Three missiles. All right, so 13 damage. 13. Um, describe how this gigantic 20-foot-long, fat, pustule-covered monster, you, you annihilate it with, like, a bunch yeah. of... Yeah! I, 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 I desperately and finally remember and then go madly digging through my backpack, emerging triumphant <laughs> with this rolled-up sheaf in my hand, and you hear me madly muttering as you all are desperately trying to hit it, and then finally... You know, three sort of puffs of air almost, uh, but they whiz past your head like uh, invisible bullets uh, just splatter this thing. Yeah, this is, this is a scene of just madness. It's crazy to think about, like, for the past 20 minutes, you are drenched in sweat, covered in muck, with that spear, you know, trying to fight over top of these serpents that are, like, climbing on top of these, like... Green, mm -hmm. all, all the monsters. dead bodies, dead bodies of, these of, things of flopping, filth demons, asleep, moaning in the background, you know, and um, and eventually you you do that, and um, uh, the noises of this place finally uh, die. And it is there's still the rats, by the way. 
<laughs> yeah, but they're like one hit point. They're, they're yeah, yeah. Let's, okay. let's not bother. <laughs> yeah. The snakes uh, swarm them, yeah. Yeah. Because yeah. eventually the snakes are going to go away, right? So we'll just... One hour, one hour. There we go. Okay. So, um, if you go around... The other thing that was about to happen is I was going to start thinking about these things waking up. Uh, but you go around with a spear and you 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 slay these things first, presumably. Um, yeah, absolutely. Probably find yeah, those big things. You know the best way to try to kill them. It's a it's a really disgusting job trying to kill them. They curl up and squill. You know, like a twenty foot long thing. So it's not fun. It's probably it takes another thirty minutes trying to figure that out. Uh, it is not fun to try to deal with. Um. And these things are just like laying around the room, and you also have killed piles of these uh, pestilent covered rats. And the uh, the demon, this demon of the underworld, has now receded back, um, back into the underworld. Yeah. Wow. And. Now, when you say this demon, what demon are we referring to? Pestilence. Oh, okay. Whatever, whatever, whatever yeah. snot nose sucked yeah, yeah, up yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, we're about to run out of time, but I want to, you know, I don't want to be like anal about, all right, well, you know, what do you do? And then like slowly, eventually you're going to figure this out. So I'd like to take you. Uh, and show you something because this green stuff is no longer here. So you see that these uh, these narrow passages uh, are there. The, you could barely crawl through them, but they no longer have these green pools flowing through them. Mm -hmm. There's also this large passage, and this large passage leads down a long corridor. And uh, at the end of this corridor, where this green stuff has gone stairs. Ooh, oh, shit. Up down? Down, what it looks like. If you would like to see what's down there, we can check. We should. Yes. There. Unlock. 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 What's <laughs> it I know those scrolls have been burning a hole in my pocket for a while, guys. Yeah, you. I the idea that that's almost the every idea scroll that I had. School wizards aren't powerful, just like so utterly got proven wrong, and has been thoroughly for a while now. But yeah, oh, yeah. Um, that's three scrolls of sleep, a, and a scroll of magic missile, and almost every spell I had. I need to start making scrolls. I have been. That's why I had oh, those yeah. sleep scrolls. I mean, we as, in, <laughs> as in me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah. And just so you know, Russ, I've been spending 200 per scroll. That was the last thing we said. I don't know if that's, you know, probably not going to improve during the winter time. I'm hopeful that as the city, as the town grows, it might get a little cheaper. God willing. So but, you yeah. uh, kind of describe some things and show you what strange things are here. This is quite strange. It's strange. Wait, wait, that previous level wasn't? Uh, What's that? I'm saying quite strange, what, compared to that previous uh, pestilence nostril snot level? Uh, I mean, uh, what are you going to take to us in, now? In fact, yes. <laughs> oh, <laughs> God. Much stranger. Oh, our brains are going to explode. Uh, let's see here. Um, there are stairs that go down for some time. Uh, you gain, you kind of lose a sense, although the stairs here are wide and grand. But tall, the separation between stairs, it feels inhuman. It doesn't feel natural to you. And it goes into this vast antechamber. Here it says on the north wall of the chamber, uh, there's an inscription uh, in a language that perhaps you don't understand. Unless um... I know only the North Nordic language. 
Yeah. Uh, unless somebody speaks the language of the light, which I think someone does, liturgic, yeah. right? <clears throat> Not liturgic. So, uh, Father Bloombed, and I think Magnus, you yeah. see an inscription here on the wall. It points to these stairs leading up from where you came. It says, Thou art entering the hospices of the healers. Do so with no hostile intent, and thou art welcome here. Um, you can see on the opposite wall a arrow going the other way, um, and it is written. Does anyone read Dr uh, Drunic? Drunic, you say? Yeah, and that's language that's of the chaos. Chaos, yeah, I do. Uh, Magnus, this reads: If anyone let these horses piss on the floor in here, they will be flogged. <laughs> Magnus starts laughing. <laughs> Is it a joke? A uh, demon joke? <laughs> possibly. And then I translate it. All right. I don't get it. Uh, would you all like to... Uh, let's do it. Let's see what's here, okay? And then and then we'll go, because this is, this is kind of weird. It's different. Um, this is not like everything else. So you see here... Oh, my gosh. Which one is freaking out on me? Uh, there is a broken down door. This should actually be open. Um, these doors are broken down. Oh my. And, uh... Stable. There is a, um... Inscription, also, with a, with a, a an arrow pointing toward this huge double door across from you. And, uh, it is also written, Runic, uh, Magnus, it reads the gut in large arcane letters and runes. And uh, and here is a stable. Any of you would recognize this, these this stables, the, the hay here has long since petrified and rotted and dried. There are bugs and things here. There is old furniture and an old desk that is shattered. Uh, the map is incorrect. Because these horses, uh, they are skeletal. They are on their feet. There are two skeletal zombie horses here. And a, a sign in Drunic um, encourages guests that they may, uh, they may ride them. There are enough of these zombie horses for all of you. <laughs> and, uh, and that's where we will end the session. <laughs> You make it back uh, to I don't probably, suppose there was probably, anything shiny in that room. In yeah, that, like any, uh, the skeleton. I, I'm sorry, the... Okay. Yeah, you know, let's go back to that. Uh, there's nothing shiny around here. It's been picked dry, the, but... Let's look the at fountain. The, yeah, the, the fountain here. Fountain, it says... Um, ah! Because certainly we will have searched <laughs> after, yeah. uh, after all of that, just in, to catch our breath. In the eyes of the uh, the demons, turn back into goo and and fall back into the floor, back into the other uh, underworld. Uh, but their eyes were um, uh, they were summoned with eyes that were made of gems. Ooh. And so um, each of these gems is worth five hundred gold pieces each. So um, uh, that's a uh... 40, that's 4,000. Nice. Right, 8 times 5, is that right? 8 times yeah. 5. Yeah. Times so eat. And, uh, and yeah, you probably go back to the watchtower first. It probably takes all of the next week in this case, so I'm sorry if you're going to try to um, do scrolls. Um, Maybe maybe it doesn't take the whole time, but you it takes at least three days, and it took three days to get down. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It takes almost the entire. And we already time. spent we spent two days before we left. Right. <laughs> so, so. Uh, so yeah, but you do make it back to Caden's Rest alive again. So.